Hi, I'm Josh Finn from J&H Aerospace. Welcome to the build video for the Tech Flyer. The Tech Flyer is our TSA high school flight airplane. It also makes a good sport model for those of you that are watching for sport aircraft. But this aircraft meets all of the restrictions for TSA flight. Now check your version of your Tech Flyer to make sure it complies with the rules. Uh, the rules are set up such that at present all of the previous versions of the Tech Flyer are still legal and we don't anticipate that changing in the near future, but it has changed in the past uh, about six or seven years ago. That, that was an issue. So with that, verify the dimensions. They're on the website uh, so that you'll know whether the airplane meets the restrictions. This is, as I said, is the latest version of the Tech Flyer. It has a removable tail boom that can be shimmed for incident settings. The wing can be slid fore and aft, and you can also adjust incidents on the wing. We have a built-up landing gear that is all laser cut. have a one-piece propeller assembly from Indoor FF Supply. Uh, and we're hoping to stay with this propeller. Uh, check your instruction sheet should you receive a different propeller assembly because there have been supply chain interruptions with these propellers in the past and in that case you'd be supplied with an Icara or similar propeller. This airplane is designed to fly on 1 16th inch uh, TAM Super Sport rubber. You can actually fly it on thinner rubber depending on tuning and whatnot and it's covered with veggie bags as far as the supplied material. You can use other materials if you're trying to build really light. You can get 1.4 micron mylar, possibly get the airplane down a little bit lower because they do tend to build a little bit overweight but not much. Um, this airplane in its current configuration straight out of the kit will fly for about three minutes when everything is tuned correctly. We will have a discussion about adjusting the propeller to get maximum flight times. Now it's very important to understand that your kit is going to arrive with the propellers attached in a box externally. Um, if we do make a switch to Icara propellers for any reason, they'll be in the bag, you'll be able to see them moving around in there, so check for that. But the important thing is when you get your package from us, check for this box because we've had cases of these getting thrown out with the packaging before. Now one of the distinctives of the Tech Flyer is that it is designed to be packaged up for safe transport. So this is the easy travel storage box that we supply uh, suitable for this aircraft. And this airplane is designed to fit in the box so we can remove the tail. The tail drops in. Ideally, don't store your rubber motors in the box. You should have several rubber motors ready to go at any given time and store them in a plastic baggie in a, in a refrigerator or freezer. And the wing pops off and drops in. Fuselage drops in and the lid goes on and off you go. Now, some of you, oh, and we have to remember one important thing rubber band to hold the box shut. You can also use a Velcro strap or something of that nature. It's very important to understand this box is able to protect your airplane from wind and being tossed around. It is not a waterproof box. Most boxes are not, so don't get it wet. And do not stack backpacks on top of it, and don't stack it where backpacks, watermelons, groceries, etc. can fall on top of it because I've, every year I talk to students that have things like that happen. When you're packaging this up for shipping, this should be the highest object in the baggage pile so that it doesn't get something on top of it and get itself destroyed. Lastly, some of you are probably asking about this. This is not a tool that we supply. This is a model stand. It's made by sticking a piece of split foam on top of a dowel rod and a base doesn't have to look like this, but this is very useful for having your airplane up here so that your work area is clear, and so when you're messing with various things, the plane doesn't get damaged, it doesn't have any weight on any of its structure, it's just concentrated on the fuselage, and so these improve the durability of your airplane. 
Uh, probably the biggest benefit of this is when you pick your airplane up out of it, it's not sitting down on carpet or on the floor or whatever where it can snag and be torn up when you go to pick the airplane up. Because it's very easy if your plane's sitting on a floor with things next to it, it might snag on a piece of tape or something or on carpet or whatever and you pick it up and leave half of the airplane behind in, in tatters. So this is something I recommend trying out. Next we're going to talk about the tools that you need to build the airplane. Then we'll talk about the tools required to fly the airplane and then we'll actually go into the kit and talk about that. Alright, so let's talk about the tools and chemicals required to build your airplane. First of all, you need to have a single edge razor blade. You can, get, you can use an X-Acto knife, uh, but the X-Acto knife needs to be have fresh, sharp number 11 blades. Uh, typically, if you're in a school room uh, building your airplane out, you're going to have a random X-Acto knife around. The blade is probably dull, so start with a new blade. Start with a new razor blade in this case. You will need a pair of pliers to complete this build and they need to have a set of cutting jaws on them. So you need needle nose pliers, so you have very sharp tip um, that is able to grip well, and uh, a set of jaws to take care of that aspect of things. Next, I recommend having a piece of rubber lubricant, um, that, uh, sorry, a tube of rubber lubricant. This is the silicon oil that we sell. This is probably the most optimal chemical that you can use on, on your rubber. Alternatively, you could use Mollycoat 33, which is also excellent. It offers no known degradation over the silicon oil, but this is another alternative. Or you can use Armorol. Armorol tends to evaporate, so it has to be reapplied very, very regularly. Silicon does not dry out, it just gets wiped off over time. So you do have to reapply the silicon, but it does a much better job. I recommend using CA glue to assemble your structure. There are other glues that you can use, but CA glue is uh, generally is, is the easiest. This is CA Accelerator. For some steps in building the airplane, you really need this. It makes the glue harden faster. And you would think super glue uh, hardens instantly. Not always. This is 3M Super 77. This is used to attach the covering material to your airplane. Do not accept substitutes. Um, I'm told that 3M Super 90 also works, but the other brands that I have worked with, because um, people ask me, well, can I use Elmer's or Krylon or whatever? The answer is no, your covering will peel off. Use the correct chemical. This is the only known chemical that will adhere the covering to your airplane and it will stay. This is petroleum jelly. Um, this is used to attach the covering, uh, the covering for your airplane to the covering frame. So you don't just spread out the covering and put it on the flying surfaces. You build out a frame that you apply this to and it's repositionable because it's just an oil, basically a very thick grease that allows the, the covering to stick down. There are probably some alternatives you could use. This is the recommended thing. And all of these tools, except for this one, and this cautery that is used for cutting your covering frame after you have uh, attached it to the aircraft are available on our website. Indoor FF Supply has uh, good quality um, needle nose pliers and wire cutters and they also have this cautery. So this is not a product we supply. You can cut the covering out uh, on your wings using a single-edge razor blade, but I really don't recommend it because unless you've built a lot of airplanes, it's very hard to do a good job with that. So the cautery is by far the best tool for the job. And once you try one, you won't want to use anything else. Now there are two other tools I'm going to show you that will also be very important in your build process. A pair of scissors of some sort. These are micro scissors that we sell. And a pair of hemostats. These are locking pliers. These tools are used predominantly for tying your rubber, rubber motors. 
the hemostats, since they lock, allow you to be able to manipulate whatever's locked in them. We sell both of these products also on our website. So now that we've talked about the materials to build the airplane and the tools, now let's talk about some of the flying materials. Now we've covered all of the uh, materials like uh, rubber lubricant that you need to actually get the rubber motors operational. But these are some tools that you need to be successful in flying. This is a digital scale. This allows you to weigh your model to verify that everything is legal with it. It's also most important for weighing the rubber motors because since they are limited to 1.5 grams with the o-rings you need to be pretty exact because any little bit that you're off um, over means your motors are not legal and any amount under means that you're leaving fuel out of your fuel tank and since the rubber motors are very small, small errors in the uh, sizing of the rubber motors have a very, very big effect on your flight performance. So this is a milligram scale. It goes all the way down to 0 .001 gram. And I recommend that because it gives you the precision you really need. This is a J&H Aerospace torque meter and a C-clamp. This is a very important tool because it allows you to measure the torque in your rubber motors and by that you can get exact results over and over. We'll show the use of this in the flying video for this airplane and you'll understand why it's so important. It allows you to give the airplane enough power to get safely off the ground but it also allows you to limit that power so that you don't get the airplane stuck in the ceiling which is a very common problem. This airplane does climb quite strongly and so you need this tool to keep you from losing your airplane or crashing or what have you which can decide the outcome of state championships as we've seen in the past. This is a plain old-fashioned uh, stopwatch. It um, goes down to hundredths of a second. I highly recommend this rather than using your cell phone to time airplanes because cell phone timers are not accurate. This is very accurate and it will give you good results and it's handy, easy to carry around and the battery doesn't go down like your cell phone does quite as quickly. This is a winder. It is used to wind the rubber motor on your airplane. It is absolutely critical that you have some form of winder for your airplane. The rubber motors for this aircraft take about 2,200 turns at full power. That takes a very long time to wind by hand. In short, it's simply not practical. The airplane doesn't even start climbing until you've got about 700 turns, and 700 turns is too much to put in practically. This allows you to do it in, at least to get to 700 turns, you can do it in, in about 20 seconds with this winder. Last tool on the list, this is a pitch gauge. Now, this is not required for you to be able to be successful with your tech flyer. You can go without this and be quite successful. However, this allows you to lock your propeller shaft into this little gauge over here, and then you can twist on the blades to reset their pitch angle, which allows you to slow your propeller down to optimize for the flight conditions. The propellers that we supply with the Tech Flyer kit this year are fairly low pitched. They're lower pitched than optimum, and that allows it to, the airplane to be very easy to fly if you're a beginner. However, if you're trying to get flights longer than about a minute and a half, you really need to have this pitch gauge because the pitch gauge allows you to wind to slow the propeller down so that the airplane climbs more slowly, requires more torque really to climb, and cruises at a slower speed and so this allows you to increase those flight times out to about three minutes. So consider getting a pitch gauge. Uh, there are, it is definitely a, a master's tool in terms of the difficulty level associated with uh, using one it can be quite high because you're doing a fairly sensitive operation, but this is the tool that lets you get to the next level. With that, let's get started with the build. All right, so let's open up the kit and see what's in it. So the first thing is your propellers that are included in the kit look like this. So these are the indoor FF supply propellers. They have a plastic bearing. They have a shaft. They have this uh, little blue guy right here is a washer. 
and then the actual propeller assembly itself. So these propellers come pre-configured. Uh, in the past we have supplied these with an aluminum bearing and, and so on. If you get Icara propellers this bearing will be separate and the propeller, propeller shaft uh, washer assembly will be on a smaller bearing that plugs into it. So if that becomes an issue that's how those propellers come in. This is the, uh, the self-contained indoor FF supply unit and these are six inch diameter so they're well within the rules. Your kit, and it's very important that as you take the parts out of the kit that you pay attention to where they are and don't uh, just strew them around or take everything out of them, basically try to preserve them. Your instruction sheet is going to have some templates and drawings that are useful to you. You can also uh, get from us the CAD drawings for the airplane for your portfolio. The kit is going to include a bag of 1 16th inch rubber. It's going to include a hardware pack. Um, one of the things in the hardware pack is this piece of piano wire. This is uh, 15 thousandth piano wire. You will have, and things get stuck together in here, so you have to pay attention. You'll have a piece of nose weight. This is uh, basically modeling clay and then you'll have a little piece of aluminum tubing and then we get to the really small stuff now your kit may include uh, thread binding this version of the tech flyer actually does not require the thread binding however it's very useful for binding propeller bearings in place on the on the fuselage so they don't move around these items here are it's actually a mixture of two things uh, you have the little rubber bands these are dental bands used for securing the wing and tail to the fuselage and then these little plastic the white plastic things are o-rings they're actually plastic washers but we're using them as o-rings to manipulate the rubber motor without it unwinding now make sure that you put all of the parts back in the hardware bag otherwise they will get lost this looks like a trash bag because it is it is a trash bag this happens to be a very thin cheap trash bag which makes it perfect for our airplane this is what you will use as your covering material it is not for putting the loose parts of the airplane in these plywood parts are the uprights for the airplane and the rear hook assembly uh, which also doubles as the mount for the tail boom. You're going to have four very heavy sticks. These are not part of the airplane. These make the covering frame. So these have nothing to do with the actual structure but these are for the covering frame. You'll have two short ones and two long ones. These components here comprise your fuselage. So you have your motor sticks, you have your tail boom, and then you have your little wing saddle. This sheet needs to be handled with care because there's a lot on it. So don't just grab this and yank on it. Carefully pick it up. This is your spars, your wing ribs, your landing gear assembly. Yeah, those three things. Um, this is somewhat version specific, however, these components are compatible with all tech flyers. It happens that they now include the landing gear parts on them. And then this last piece that you also should pick up very carefully and treat it uh, with care, these are your wing and tail fins. So winglets, rudders, they're the, um, they are identical on this aircraft. And this is enough to build two airplanes. So with that, that's all the parts that are in the kit. Let's get started by building flying surfaces. All right, this material is parchment paper. You can get it at the grocery store. I recommend using this to hold your airplane down. And then I recommend, not to hold your airplane down, but to protect your table. So to set your airplane's building assembly on it. 
use packing tape to secure it to the table. Now you want to get it as flat as you can. If the tape goes off the edge, no biggie, but do curl an end around like this so that when you're done you can peel the tape back up because for those of you who are high school students, your mother will be upset with you. And for those of you who are adults, your wife will be upset with you if you don't get the tape off the table. And you'll also be upset with yourself if you stick the end together as I just did. So what we're going to do is grab those handy dandy scissors. Snip off that. The purpose of using specifically parchment paper is that CA glue, also known as super glue, does not stick very strongly to this material and it doesn't soak through. Um, if you are thinking, oh, well, I'll just use wax paper, wax paper is viable, but it sticks very aggressively to super glue. So then you have to peel the wax paper off of your airplane. The glue doesn't soak through, so the table is still protected. Like I said, it's, it sticks to the airplane. Um, some people have been successful in using like glad wrap as well, but bear in mind, glad wrap likes to go everywhere. It's very hard to manipulate. Now, at this point, we can begin construction of the airplane. Oops. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to pop out a brand new razor blade and we're going to start with one of the wings. Now, it's very important for me to point out there are two sets of wing spars, there are two sets of, of horizontal tail spars. Only get out one set at a time. So we're going to start with the wing and we're going to uh, gonna pop it loose by its tabs. Now you can just break this all out by hand if you're careful uh, and, and that works great except for the fact that this part sheet starts to get broken up and then your parts will start wandering around and getting lost. So if I just break the spars out like that, now everything else is still secure. Now you also have a set of wing ribs here and another set here and you have a set of stab ribs here and here. Get out one set of wing ribs. Now there are extra wing ribs in here should you break one. But bear in mind that you need to be very careful. There are no extra t uh, wing and tail spars. Sorry, we uh, weren't able to supply spare parts for everything. Now if you notice, this kind of popped loose a little bit as I was popping it out. That's fine. The important thing for you to do, and then of course take this and set it in a safe place, is to bear in mind that there is one rib in here that is shorter than the others. And it's this one right here. You may want to take a sharpie and mark this one. For now, I'm just going to set it off to the side. Now also, if you're careful, you can actually break the ribs out like so. Now they have a little bit of flashing on the end, so you might want to make sure you um, pull all of that free. And so on. So you need a total of seven, uh, six, sorry, eight of these ribs. This is a total of nine ribs in the wing. So you have one center rib and then you have eight more of the regular ones. We'll break all of those loose, remove any little extra bits from your spars, and then you can just carefully pop them apart. We're going to set these with the notches facing each other. Now don't make the mistake of building the spars like this, 
where you slot the ribs down into them. This presents too much frontal area and it elevates the ribs above the leading edges and it makes a mess. And I've seen several airplanes built that way um, and they can be made to, f to fly surprisingly well, uh, but you're losing a substantial amount of performance by, by making that mistake. Now take your super glue and there are two ways that you can assemble this airplane. So what you can do, this is the center rib, you can stick it in and you can stick the others in all the way down and then join the trailing edge in. Um, that's the way our cameraman likes to do his. I kind of prefer to join uh, each rib to the uh, leading and trailing edge individually. That's just the way I personally like to do it. Um, he'll probably make a face at me or something. Uh, in the instructional, uh, the written instructions for this airplane, uh, Logan's method is the one that, that we show. So again, remembering that this was the short rib. You only need to get just a little bit of glue on the ends so that it slots in there. So you do want it not just on the end, but on the sides of the end. And you can slide this all together. And typically these ribs will slide straight in there with no issue. Occasionally you'll have a rib that when you try to put it in there, it's gonna not wanna slide in. And in that case, you'll wanna grab the rib um, and along the unburnt sides, you'll wanna pinch it a little bit to make it narrower so that it fits in there. Don't try to force it in or you'll collapse the sides in and then it won't fit in all the way. And then that's the reason that's an issue is then the wing ends up too wide in cord and you can get disqualified from competition in addition to things not lining up well. Now, if you notice, everything is just, as I'm gluing it, I'm just sticking it together and it's staying. Um, that is typical with your CA glue, especially Bob Smith glue. Uh, it tends to, to harden very quickly. But should you run into a situation where something's not hardening correctly, you can simply take your, uh, your accelerator, and I like to dip it onto the part like that. You can spray it, but it goes everywhere and it can make a mess. And particularly if your wing is already covered and you're making a repair, the um, accelerator will actually dissolve the 3M77 adhesive, which can cause a real problem. Because then your covering just starts to peel off the airplane. Now if you'll notice, I'm not putting in the tip ribs yet. I typically like to wait till the end for those. Now these tip ribs, they don't have a slot that they go into, so the thing you've got to do is make sure that they're straight up and down so that they mount in correctly. As mentioned, you have an extra rib in case you break one. And we do sell entire sets of spare ribs as well. go. So again, these. this is the wing. It is built with the highly curved ribs. The stab is built with the less curved ones, which we'll show now. 
All right, so next we're going to pop out a set of horizontal tail spars. Now, the difference between the wing ribs and the stab ribs is the stab ribs are the less curved ones. And for those of you who are wondering, STAB stands uh, is short for horizontal stabilizer, as opposed to the vertical stabilizer, which a lot of people think of as the rudder. The vertical stabilizer is the part that doesn't move. The rudder is a part that actually does move. And this one's being a little stuck. Oh, I managed to get a little sliver off on that. Again, take your spar and rib landing gear sheet and set it off to the side. And we have plenty of extra stab ribs because you only need five. As we mentioned, these are slightly curved, so you want to lay them with the curved side up so you don't put them in sideways. Now there is no short rib on these, all the ribs are the same on the horizontal tail. And so there's your horizontal tail. All right, so now that your wing and your horizontal tail are finished, it's time to cover them. So next we're gonna show you how to build a covering frame. So in the meantime, put these together and if you happen to have one of those storage boxes, stick these in it while you're doing that so they don't get damaged because these are very, very fragile and vulnerable at this time. So put them in a safe place and then you can proceed on to uh, building the covering frame, applying the covering to the flying surfaces and then cutting out the covering. These components here form your covering frame. So these long sticks are 18 inches long and if you look at one of your wings it's not a whole lot shorter than that, so you don't have a lot of room to play with. You're going to want to glue these shorter sticks to the ends. It's very important that you do that. And get this as square as you can. Again, little tricks like this you can use to make sure everything's squared up. Alright, 
it's because my piece of parchment paper is not quite big enough. Alright, so this is what your covering frame is going to look like. Okay, so in preparation for our covering, we're going to get some petroleum jelly on here. And again, I'm using a paper towel. That prevents me from getting that material all over my hands and possibly contaminating the airframe to the point that um, the rubber motor is impacted. It also avoids a secondary issue which is um, making it difficult to get the glue joints secured on the airplane. Hold that in so that it's not Getting all over everything. All right, that was a new boo. Don't want to set that on top of our flying surfaces. So this is the covering material that we're using to cover the airplane. And what we're gonna do, I can find where I put my scissors. Now, this is basically like a hoop inside now, so I can stick my hand all the way through. I'll slide that covering frame away so I don't get the, um, Vaseline all over my covering. Now, you can come in here and you can estimate the width of that. But again, you don't want to lay it on there. And so that gives me a good idea of how wide this needs to be. Set aside the rest of your covering. And that way you have plenty to use on your second airplane. Take this piece of covering and do not lay the covering frame on it yet. What you want to do is we are going to wad this covering up in a tight little ball. I know that sounds crazy, but it will make your airplane better if you trust me on this. So we take this and we wad it up very tightly. Try to make the smallest little ball you can. Now, take the covering, peel it apart, kind of start laying it out, and wad it up a second time.
I know this seems like it's something that will hurt your covering, but it will not hurt the covering. It will not reduce its strength, and it will actually give you a smoother, better looking covering job than if you had left the, the film nice and flat and smooth. And the reason for that is we have now made the film a little bit springy so that it will lay down better on the airplane. It complies with the curvature of the wing better. And so as a result, you get a better looking and a better flying airplane. Now I'm spending a lot of time trying to smooth this out. I don't have to get it 100% perfect at this point, but I wanted to get it pretty nice. Now I'm going to take my covering frame and I'm putting Vaseline side down and laying it down on here. And so what I'm doing is pressing it onto the film so that it's secured. Now, the film is still kind of loose, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull lengthwise along here. that's going to allow me to get some of the wrinkles out. Now it is very important I want the film pretty tight this way. Across wise it can actually be a little loose. If it's too tight across here um, it'll actually deform your structure when you uh, when you cover the airplane because remember the film's a little uh, uh, springy now and so it will actually um, tighten up on your flying surfaces and deform them and that actually makes your airplane harder to fly. So with that we've got the covering on the frame. All right, I'm going to give a brief blurb and then we'll go outside. Okay. 30, 40. Okay. All right, so take your flying surfaces with your covering frame out of the way and get your 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. And again, if you're having trouble locating it, it is in my online store. You can get it from me. And then take your flying surfaces, and I recommend actually taking them one at a time and going outside because this they're going to get very sticky and you're going to have trouble maneuvering things. So what I'm going to suggest you do is set them up as if you were going to go ahead and cover them. Uh, for, by the way, some of you are going to be seeing this footage in the Stinger video and for those of you that are dealing with that, it's a much wider wing and so you may have to do two separate covering stages because the, uh, the covering frame uh, may be too small to get everything on there uh, all at once. So in that case, you would spray just a wing, cover it, then take your stab and repeat the process separately, putting a new piece of covering on the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the wing, we're going to go outside, and we're going to spray it. Uh, and then uh, we're going to skip uh, showing uh, spraying both of them, but we will show lining them up. All right, so shake your 3M77 up real well and spray it a little bit, see which way the wind's going. Currently blowing that way, so I want the flying surface downwind. Do not hold this right up here against it. You're going to hold it out. I know that's something that feels a little awkward, but hold it a good distance out so that you can just get very light coverage like that. Now, try to not spray it on your hand. One thing you'll notice is that means I avoided that area where I was holding it, so now I have to go back. The wind is shifting again, and so we want to get that area. And with that, our frame is now very, very, very sticky. Notice I'm holding this with one hand. If I were to grasp it over here, you can see how this starts to pull a little bit, and I could actually rip every rib out on this wing. So what you want to do is if I'm going to take my hand loose of that side, I want to grab over here so that I can disengage in that manner. Don't switch sides. Stay on one side of your flying surface. All right, so we're going to take our horizontal tail. We're going to set it down. Um, Try to not get it super close to your wing. That way you have room to maneuver in here. The flips, 
side of that is you want to make sure that they're both going to stay within the bounds of the covering frame before you set the covering down. And in my case, I've got them too far apart. Now, if something is misaligned a little bit as you're setting this down, get it right before you come into contact. Do not try to reposition this or you will mess everything up. You get one shot when you're doing this. And so now I'm going to go around very gently. I'm not pressing down. I'm literally just brushing my finger very gently along to bring, I'm, I'm not pressing the film onto my wing and tail, I am simply bringing them into contact. So I'm just brushing along here, I'm not pressing down. It's just enough that the covering comes into contact. So if you press down, your ribs will start to deflect and then break, and that's what we want to avoid. Now that I've done that, I'm going to come back I'm actually on this uh, wing and stab spars, I'm actually going to press down a little bit. Now my stab ribs are relatively flat so I can apply a little bit of pressure to them and they'll be fine. But for the wing, we're just going to very, very lightly rub this down. We don't want to press or we will break the ribs. The reason I have done this in two steps is so that I can avoid uh, getting the film shifted around and getting wrinkles um, in the wing. And I did get a little wrinkle there, but that'll be okay. Now take that razor blade we talked about, that nice fresh sharp razor blade, and in between the wing and the stab is where we always want to start because you're going to have a strip of film along here that is going to want to wander otherwise and then it gets hard to trim the excess off. And I'm already having that problem right here. Now if you have an electric cautery this becomes a much easier problem to solve so you should strongly consider getting one of those from Indoor Free Flight Supply. Now if you're building a uh, stinger, it's allowable to you leave a little bit of excess around the edges, just a teeny tiny bit um, on the front and back of your wing, not on the tips, but on the front and back, and you can curl that under on those carbon fiber wing spars and stab spars, and it will give you a slightly uh, stronger uh, bond between the covering material and the aircraft. But for this airplane, we want no excess whatsoever. This airplane being the, uh, the senior flyer. Now I should be able to lift this off of here. There's a little bit of static holding it down. So again, we just gently lift it off, and there's our horizontal tail. I've got a little bit of adhesive on there also that was holding it to the table. Now I've got a little bit of excess right here, so I just bring my razor blade along and trim off that excess. And so my one complaint with my covering job here is I got a little bit of a wrinkle here. It's best to have wrinkles away from the leading edge of the wing, so this is going to become the back of the wing. Alright, so we have our wing and our horizontal tail 
very nicely covered. If yours aren't as perfect as that, that's okay. There is a learning curve to getting good covering jobs and usually your first one's not great. Your second one is usually much better. I have my set of wingtips here, so I'm gonna cut out one set of wingtips. Remember that this material is uh, contest grade, so very lightweight, 1 32nd inch balsa. And 1 32nd inch balsa is, is very fragile. So you want to be very careful in handling these wingtips because particularly until they are firmly attached to the wing and tail, um, they are very, very fragile. They get a little bit less fragile once they're actually attached because the grain of the, of the wood is oriented so that the, uh, the wing works together as a unit. And then just keep the other wingtips together until you build your second airplane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one wingtip and I'm going to attach it to the wing like so. And we'll use some object to hold it up like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue along this outside rib. And it is, hold on a second, there we go. It's also important to try to get some glue on the end of the spar, not just the rib, because in a hard hit with the ceiling or walls or whatever, the rib can break loose a little bit, but if the wingtip's actually tied into the spar, you get a, a little bit stronger of a join there. So you can hold it up like so. Now alternatively, if you had another nice straight face thing like this, you could then use your CA to, uh, accelerator to dip in there and harden this very quickly, although in my case, it's already hardened. Now, do make sure that you orient both tips the same way, like so, and you don't have one reversed. The airplane will actually fly if you reverse them, and in fact, you can turn the wing around backwards, and it'll still fly surprisingly well. But best performance is achieved with the, the tips swept back, same, ori same orientation. And the same thing is true of your horizontal tail. The curved covering side goes up on both the wing and the tail. That's important to remember too. Now the tail is a little bit narrower than the wing. So you may have a little bit sticking out. on the uh, ends and that's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't affect anything on the airplane. Okay, and with that, your wing and tail are assembled and ready for tying in with the rest of the structure. Get out your plywood parts sheet and break out the uprights from it. So be careful when you're doing this because the bottom part is kind of fragile.
Now there is one of these uprights that has an F on it and the other does not. F stands for front. So if you remember we said that the wingtips need to be swept back so we're going to put letter F up here. And then we want to notch this in so that it fits square on here. And when I say square, I mean in this direction and preferably also in this direction. This direction is less critical because the saddle will kind of constrain it. Now the next thing to do is to attach the rear wing post. You might ask why they are different because they don't really look different and the answer is that the rear post is a little bit shorter than the front post. And then if you can sight down these right here here, you want them to be roughly parallel, just like that. Alright, so these motor stick sets may already be separated, just depends. Sep uh, just take one, and we're going to start with the wing mount. So we're going to put a little bit of glue here on this flat face. I'm going to slide it all the way in. Oop. And be careful, as you can see, things break if you mishandle them. Now notice I'm going ahead with installing this because I have wet glue. And so after the glue is cured, then go back and make your repair and all you're looking to do is just line it up. We'll do the same thing for the front post. stick it on through there. So now the wing assembly is complete. Alright, we're going to attach our horizontal tail next. So we're going to pop the tail boom out. This tail boom does not have a top and bottom, so um, you just simply want to orient it vertically and it'll be fine. So the thicker dimension goes up and down. You can tell by the fact that the top and bottom have the laser cut marks on them. Use a heavy object to hold that down. Put a dab of glue on the bottom of your horizontal tail at the front and the back. No need in the middle. Line this up on the motor stick sorry, tail boom, just like so. Try to get everything flat and oriented square. And with that, the tail assembly is complete. Next, let's assemble the motor stick. Now, there is a process... Oops assembling the motor stick and so you want to pay very close attention in this step. So the first thing that we want to do is 
take two of the little rubber bands. And we don't want to lose our O-rings. Slide one over this end. You know, see there's two little marks here. Leave the rubber band forward of those marks. And then take another rubber band. Slide it on the opposite way. Now crack out these plywood parts. And one is going to go on one side of the back and the other on the other. The important thing for you to remember is you've got this cut out and the hook goes down here. So you could put it over on this side, which that's what I'm going to do. And the reason I'm going to do that is that it spaces the motor over to this side, which gives me a little bit better clearance. And it's also easier for you to see on camera. So what we want to do is line up the back of this part with this back corner. Oops. So that it's parallel all the way down on the bottom and we're also flush on the top. Now you can take this other piece and it goes over here on the other side. Exact same process for attaching it. Now, this is one time when I do say spray this. So we now want this to be completely hardened. The reason is we're going to take two more of the little rubber bands. And we're going to slide both of those onto this area. This is to secure the tail boom in place. Take your razor blade and make a cut. Remember, this is the side that the hook's on, so we're sloped up here, we're flat down here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a vertical cut into the fuselage just like this. You can see how far I've gone in. You can then go back if you want to and kind of hug it out a little bit. Now, take your propeller assembly and it's going to notch in, just like that. So you slide it in from the front. You don't jam it down like this. Instead, you slide it in from the front. Now pull it back out. Now this part, when you do this, you have to move fairly quickly because the glue is going to harden as you're doing this and so you can get stuck with the uh, propeller assembly in some position you don't want like sticking halfway out. So when I do this, I zip it in and I leave it. I can no longer remove this, it's now stuck. So that's how quickly that happens. So now your propeller is in place. It is on the bottom of the motor stick. The hook is on the bottom of the motor stick. Everything matches up. All right, on your parts sheet, these little skinny parts with bent ends are your landing gear legs. Cut out two of those. They sometimes require a little bit of encouragement to get them out of the sheet. Be careful, they are a little fragile. Um, and they kind of remain so, but there they are. We'll go ahead and we'll cut out the center strut as well. And pop out the little squares in it. And then lastly, let's get two wheels cut out. Now we can set the 
sparse sheet off to the side and we have all these parts together. Take your piece of aluminum tubing. I'm going to use a piece of plywood for this. So we're going to lay this um, tubing on this piece of wood and we're now going to dull our razor blade. The good news is we are done cutting things out so now I can oops now if you notice there I'm just rolling that back and forth and that cuts straight through that piece of aluminum tubing fresh razor blade will do that a not so fresh one won't and so I'm going to make another one of those these are about an eighth of an inch long you can make them actually shorter than that but I'm going to show an eighth of an inch just because that's very easy to do for someone who hasn't done it before. Now what you're going to do is you're going to slide those pieces of aluminum tubing into the wheel like so. Now I have, I happen to have, a spare rib. I'm going to cut the end off on a bevel. I'm going to put glue on this and I'm going to use that so that I can dip glue in here and then try to get this kind of this piece of tubing centered up in there just like that. Now the important thing is to not get glue in the holes or the wheel becomes useless. We'll stick the second axle in and if you're not careful they uh, tend to fall right through the other side. And I like to put a little bit of glue on the other side just for good measure. Again, being very careful not to get glue in the tube itself. Just like that. Now, take the uh, piece of wire. And we're going to take a set of needle nose pliers and we're going to grip the end with about a sixteenth of an inch in there. Now, don't grab this piece of wire and bend it around like this. You want to use your thumb to force this at a 90 degree angle. It should actually hurt your thumb a little bit. You should feel it dig in, kind of like you're pinching a guitar string or something. And so you get a nice sharp bend that way. Then, we're going to snip this, and when you cut a piece of wire, both pieces go flying opposite directions. Now you can actually, if it's your pair of pliers, you can squirt this through a, a full of um, RTV silicon, cut it free after it hardens, and then that actually captures the piece of wire on that side. In my case, I am going to grab both pieces and I'm going to snip it. And so now I have one piece of wire like that. Now I'm going to make a second one. Take one of those little pieces of wire that you just made, slide it in like so, so it's sticking out the other side, and now probably the easiest way is to take your pair of pliers and grasp this like so. And if you notice on the end of this um, landing gear strut there's this little slot. What you're going to do is kind of line up with that slot and you're going to push this wire straight through so it kind of pops out the other side and so if you imagine a straight line coming down here you want that axle perpendicular to it. Now mine is kind of crooked in there that's okay the plane will still work alright. Now here's the annoying part you gotta take it back apart. Now what you do 
if I can get it to go. There we go. Squirt a little bit of, of glue on there. And find that hole and punch it back in. And don't do what I just did, which was let the, the wheel slide right up there against the wet glue so that your wheels won't turn freely. You can see mine was hanging up there for a minute. Still is a little bit. You want those to turn freely, makes the airplane take off better, and it's also required by the rules. So we're going to repeat that same procedure on the other wheel. Except this time, I'm going to cheat a little bit. So I'm going to show you another way to do this, which is, in this way, you've got to be careful because there's no margin for error if you do this. I put glue on. And I punch it straight in. And now, that one's done, potentially with less drama. Now, on this side, we're going to apply glue, and then it's going to notch in to the strut just like that. Now you can take the other landing gear leg and it attaches exactly the same way. Just like that. Now you can take your motor stick and the landing gear assembly attaches right there over those marks. Now, there are other places you could potentially attach this. You could, if you wanted to get really experimental, you could actually attach it against the wing mount like that. Um, theoretically, you could put it on the rear wing mount, um, but that starts to become a little bit more critical. But in my case, I'm just going to attach it to the motor stick, like I said. could even, if you had double stick tape, you could use double stick tape so that this would be semi-removable. Now your motor stick assembly is complete. Alright, so at this point all we have to do is show the basic assembly of the airplane. So your wing slots on in roughly this location, as I said roughly because we'll finalize its location in a little bit. And then we can slide the tail boom in. Just like that. And now your tech flyer is structurally completed. And so all we have to do now is prep rubber motors for it. Okay, so we're going to take our scale out, and before we make a rubber motor, let's go ahead and let's weigh this airplane. So we wait for our scale to zero, and then you'll notice I'll have, I have a little stand here for the airplane to fit into, sort of like my model stand. This airplane... Excuse me one second, I gotta get up. Six, six, two, four. This one is 6.624, so this is important, because that means this airplane is not legal for competition. It is underweight, it has to weigh 7 grams. So I want to take a little bit of lead, or clay, and stick it here. And that brings me up to 6.97. You would have been fine. And now I'm at 7.1. That's a little too much. Yeah, you are correct. I would have been yeah, fine. Because all by the time you had your glue, it would have been at 7. Yeah. But that puts us at 7.021. Now, what I recommend doing... Um, 
and there, there are different schools of thought on this, I recommend gluing the clay up here because that allows you to slide your wing further forward and gets you more tail moment. Because this airplane tends to end up, oops, excuse me, tends to end up just a little bit tail heavy, so you have to slide the wing pretty far back. And as a result, and by the way, the glue, or sorry, the clay tends to fall off. So I like to put a tiny little dab of glue. That's what our cameraman was mentioning, is that um, the glue would have made up that little bit of extra weight. But now I have the airplane ballasted. And if I were to bring this back into, into play, and it is still zeroed, that's impressive. Now we are up to 7.037. And if you remember, we were at 7.021 before we added the, the glue to, to, the, um, to the mix. So glue does add a little bit of weight. Now obviously that was a tiny bit, um, but it's still important. And I'm not gonna turn off the scale because we're gonna need it here in a minute. Okay, so a typical 1.5 gram motor that is made from 1 16th inch rubber ends up about 34 inches long. So I'm gonna cut my rubber motor to 35 inches. You say, why are you cutting it oversized? It's always easier to remove rubber than it is to add rubber. If y'all find a way to uh, add rubber, please let me know. Um, and knotting it together is not an option because the knot itself adds weight. Now I've gotten two little O-rings out. And so I'm going to slide those O-rings onto the rubber motor. Now, we're going to take this whole rubber motor and we're just going to coil it up for the moment because the O-rings are part of the official weight of the rubber motor. And you want to have them in there because it's very hard to manage the motor without them. This is a lesson in being very careful about things. So this batch of rubber is a little bit thinner than the last one I had and you can see that we are at 1.444. So that rubber motor is underweight. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna make another rubber motor because this one is underweight. Now it's close enough, you could get pretty good flight performance with it, but that's a, a critical issue. So I'm going to make the next one about a little over 36 inches long. and I'll get out two more O-rings because since I do a lot of demo flying, that other rubber motor is gonna get used. I just don't need it for contest flying. Also, I hear that I'm a little too old to fly uh, in the actual TSA competition. All right, so this one's at 1.6. So we're gonna snip little bits off. Now at 1.584, 1.566, this one's gonna need some big snippage. 1.5, no, 1.51. You gotta watch this because this will throw off your weight all has to be suspended there. That is at 1.496. That's a little bit too... There we go. That's 1.48. Now the reason we've gone a little bit significantly under is because you're gonna glue, gonna add lube and glue and there's some residual lubricant you can't get out of the rubber. Um, plus you're going to put a dab of glue on the end, and if you're not careful, that becomes an issue. So I'm going to take my silicon oil. Yeah, 
Yes, this is a brand new tube of it. And don't squirt quite that much out. Just get enough to have a little bit of residue on here. Now, I have snipped this into the hemostats with just a tiny little bit sticking out. Now I'm going to tie a knot in this rubber. It's like a, a granny knot, like that. Now it's important to have this lubricated while you're tying the knot or you will break the rubber. So I'm going to tie that and, and cinch it up as tight as I can. And I'm going to tie a second knot. Now, this part's important. We want a tiny little bit of glue, preferably on the knot that's closer to the hemostats. I'm just touching a tiny little dab. You see, you can't even see that dab of glue. Kind of rub it in a little bit. And that will ensure that the rubber motor doesn't come untied. Now, at this point, I take this rubber motor, and rub it in really good. And now I want to check the weight of it. And this will explain our concern that we had with um, the glue and whatnot. And we do need to zero this scale. There we go. And it's not staying all the way on there. You can see now I'm at 1.49, so I added 10 milligrams there, so that's significant to pay attention to. So there you go, completed rubber motor ready to go. You want to put this in a plastic bag, keep it in a refrigerator until uh, or freezer until you're at your site to fly. Uh, it's very important also never leave these in a hot car because um, the heat will damage them very quickly. Even like 20 minutes in a hot car can really damage the rubber. Don't leave your airplane in a hot car either because the propeller blades can warp and also the covering can shrink and distort your airplane so it becomes unflyable. Uh, but particularly the propeller blades are very sensitive to intense heat so you want to keep them away from that. All right, one last thing I want to cover is how to use a pitch gauge. So we're going to take this airplane apart. It's not normal to do pitch gauge operations with this type of an airplane uh, or this type of an assembly. So you have to do a couple of things differently from how you normally would. So because I have everything attached here, this does not fit correctly. So what you're going to want to do is turn your pitch block around like this. Now we have a rubber band in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt, let's see, best way to fit this in is like so. Still wanting to wander around. All right, this particular one I have because this, I use this pitch block for other things. I have these two pieces um, too far, too close together to fit on either side of this bearing. So unfortunately, in this case, we actually do have to take this assembly apart. So you need to be very careful when you do this so that you don't lose everything. So I've straightened that front hook. I'm going to pull everything off. Don't lose your little nose bearing. Washer. Thank you. The washer, not the nose bearing. The nose bearing is attached to the airplane. And now I can secure my uh, propeller shaft back in place. 
and it centers up correctly. And now, one problem, I do have a dab of glue that got in here somewhere. Much better. Now that centers reliably. Now I can drop my propeller back onto its prop shaft. And so currently at a two inch radius, my propeller is sitting at a very shallow, shallow angle there. That angle is about 13 degrees right there. Now I would like to have that angle be about I'd like it to be about 30 degrees. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to twist on this propeller. Now it's very important that you understand if you bend this this plastic too much it will break and then your propeller will be ruined. You can already hear a couple of glue joints kind of splitting and letting go. So you want to be careful about that. And now that blade, when I just gently tap it up against there, lays right there at a 30 degree angle. Now if you do this to one blade, you have to do it exactly to the other. Hear that cracking a little bit and again you can break your propeller hub if you're not careful so this is again this pretty advanced task you want to be careful about it and there now I'm laying level now once you've done that take a little bit of glue right here where this um, spar extension attaches to the rest of the propeller hub. Glue we'll it back so it'll stay put. Now once that's done, take your prop shaft out, slide it in, place your washer back in place, and then your propeller, and now use your thumb force this over at a 90 degree angle and now the propeller is back in place and again this is just something that allows you to get higher performance if you've already maxed out the performance of the airplane this is a, a method for unlocking a little bit more all right the last thing we want to do is to balance the airplane so I'm going to slide an o-ring on the front don't really have to but wrap it around and slip it back on so we've doubled it up so the rubber motor is taut. Now we want the airplane to balance about an inch behind the wing and in this case I've got it about right. I could stand to slide it back a little bit more. So you want to be careful when you're doing this to just kind of ride the little rubber bands along. And since the wing has mass, as you slide it back, the CG location moves. We're just concerned about the CG location relative to the wing. So we're about an inch behind the wing, and this is what I've found to be the um, generally the easiest place to balance the airplane. It flies the, uh, the easiest here. You could potentially slide the wing further forward and shim out a lot of incidents and possibly get slightly higher performance, but this is just the, the spot that I like. Now I will say, if you've built the airplane straight and you balance it at that location, you will need to shim in a little bit of down elevator. Um, and that amount is about the thickness of your plywood sheet. Actually, no, let's get a larger piece. And so you can drop that down in here if you can get it to lay flat. Mine's not wanting to because it's too big. Oops. So you would drop that in 
up at the front. It's very important that you make sure that those shims can't get lost. Um, like you could use glue stick to secure them to the bottom of the tail boom instead of into the motor stick. And I have lost control of my dental band. I have really lost control of it. Well, at least y'all get to see me struggle with this on camera so you know that it's not just you. Don't want to cut it. Just want to. There we go. And now it's in place like that. And so by shimming that up, we lower this angle so there's less angle on the horizontal tail. And that may have actually been too much, but anyway, that gives you an idea of uh, where to put it. All right, that completes the build and basic flight preparation for the Tech Flyer from J and H Aerospace. We hope you've enjoyed this build video and that it has uh, given you the information you need to be successful. Please check out the written build manual also on the website. And also to fly your airplane successfully, you will want to watch the flying video that we have recorded for this airplane showing how to get best performance out of it. We'll see you at the con contests. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.